that a lot of lawyers and law firms don't really talk about, which I think I've been kind of putting out there, but it's really Bitcoin, basically. What's fascinating about this kind of disruption is it's been by far the fastest growth disruption that's ever happened. The platform for lawyers and their teams to be able to work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. Welcome to my legal academy, helping lawyers work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. Well, hello everyone, this is Ken Hardison and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the honor and the opportunity for Sam Malai. Thank you for being being on our podcast and our YouTube channel. Appreciate that. Sam. Of course, we're long overdue, Ken. We're long overdue. Yeah, absolutely. So the reason I got Sam here today is I want to talk about artificial intelligence. And uh, I can tell you in our film of masterminds, it's the buzz. I mean, people are trying to figure out what this means. And I've been following Sam and I, he's he's always ahead of the curve. And so I asked him would he be on our podcast and answer probably the same questions you out there, lawyers like me, how can we best use this? You know, and is it just another fad or is it the best thing since the microchip for computers? So Sam, thank you. And, uh, I just like people to tell their story because you've got a unique story. I mean, you've got a fascinating story. So just tell us your story. Sure. So I started my first law firm uh, eight years ago, pretty much uh, right after I passed the bar. And I had a lot of time on my hands in my first year because I didn't have, I don't have any source of clients. So I basically had to teach myself how to generate clients online. And uh, I basically built my first website, taught myself how to do SEO, taught myself how to do Google ads, learned about the landing pages and funnels. Then got into automations and luckily for me i was always the implementer as soon as i would learn something right away i wouldn't overthink things and i started you know implementing it right away started seeing results then i started when i started seeing results i, I started duplicating it over and over again without really overthinking it too much uh fast forward uh, eight years later been able to uh, start and grow seven law firms uh, three of them are running on multi-million dollars a year um i also have a online academy that i teach lawyers how to also um, grow a successful law firm, how to get more clients, how to set up automations, how to hire virtual assistants, how to run a virtual and automated and scalable law firm. Yeah, then where are you located at? I'm in Los Angeles. Okay. That's a competitive market, my friend. It is. And I would say like, if you can make it out in California or New York and Texas, then you can pretty, pretty much make it anywhere. I, I agree. I agree. That's uh, I would say California, Texas, and Florida. Are and Florida yeah. yeah, they're the, they're the toughest states. That's probably why we have the most members in Pilma from those, especially from Florida and Texas. I don't think people in California know who I am yet, but but we got a lot of people in Florida and Texas. Sure. Totally. Maybe. And then so for us too, most of our clients come from those uh, coastal states. Um, and the reason is just, just so tough and so saturated. So you really have to be strategic, work with the right people to really make it out and be successful. So just for people like me that are... Uh, when it comes to technology, we're just ignorant. Uh, tell us what artificial intelligence is, and then let's talk about the different things that's out there right now, especially uh, reading the newspaper today, like there's some new things that come out this week. Sure, so the buzzword artificial intelligence is just the overarching technology, but the application of it in, comes in different forms. So one of those, and the most popular one is called ChatGPT, which is made by OpenAI, and actually, Ken, you know who is one of the founders, co-founders of OpenAI? Yeah, Elon Musk. A lot of people don't know that. He's one of the co-founders. Really? Yeah, uh, he's one of the co-founders. Um, and he also, there's another uh, co-founder, Sam Altman. He leads the biggest incubation company in the world. So for him to leave his, you know, his position to lead one of the biggest uh, incubators to now lead this company just shows how revolutionary this will be. So essentially, ChatGPT, uh, what it allows you to do is to conversate with a, a robot, essentially. And it basically takes information that's already out there. And it's able to kind of think and give you what you're asking for. So let's just say it's, it's basically like Google 2.0. Google 1.0 is when you go on Google, you seek information, you get, you get information. But now this takes information and kind of hand delivers it to you and says, this is the answer that you're looking for, or this is the prompt. This is the information that you need. And it basically, it's a whole new wave of be able to decipher and get meaning out of information. And it's been revolutionary. So if you haven't tried it out, just Google chat GBT. 
Uh, you just have to create an account. It's free. And then just literally go throw random prompts in there, questions or instructions or whatever you could possibly th uh, think about. Um, and when I got exposed to this um, in early December, I jumped on it early and I started thinking about and brainstorming about how this could be applied for our law firms. So I started coming up with prompts. These are basically the instructions that you give to the ChatGPT, And these are the prompts that I came up with. One is if you need to draft a contract. So you never, you don't have to rely on a contract lawyer anymore. You can use these. Obviously, it still helps to have a lawyer to review it to make sure that it's okay. But for the most of it, like 80, 90, 80, 90% 90 of the of the content of the contract, you go to uh, draft. Second thing you could do is you could review a contract. You could literally ask ChatGPT here, review this contract and tell me exactly what are the three things that I should, you know, I should negotiate for. What are the things that are unfair about this contract? And you know. You know, whether I should even, it doesn't give you a specific advice, but it will kind of, if you ask it the correct way, then you'll kind of get the, the main points. Other thing you can do is you could do a lot of marketing stuff. You could ask, you could do keyword research. You could uh, have it write emails for you. It could write, help you write your ads for you. It could help you write stories that you, that you can put in your emails. It could help you write uh, press releases. Also, for when it comes to social media, it could help you write captions for your Instagram and TikTok, your Facebook captions, or any, any type of advertisement. It could also help you write blog articles, long-term blog articles that you can. And a lot, of, a lot of times when I share this, a lot of people say, well, doesn't Google know? Well, there are also tools that could go and paraphrase the output that uh, ChatGPT gives you to go um, to pretty much paraphrase it. Also, uh, uh, also, it could help you with your YouTube videos. It could help you come up with topics. Uh, write the bullet points for your videos, write the script for your videos, uh, create titles, create description, generate tags, and then three other overarching big categories, uh, productivity, you know, when it comes to how to be productive, also health and entertainment. So these are all like little uh, categories and different ways that, that lawyers can use ChatGPT. I've been able to put this list together. I have this with me. If anybody wants it, maybe you can, I'll share it with you and maybe you can share it with your, your audience as well. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we had a lawyer talking to us at one of our meetings at Pilma and he said he, he, he gave it, he fed it the information on a PI case and said, write me a demand. He said it's the best damn a demand letter he's seen in years. Totally. He said, and in like 15 seconds. So think what that could do for a PI firm. I mean, really. Or, totally. or And plus, what if you got people offshore? do it using this and training them how to because it's all about using what i've read and i don't know it's like you said it's really important to know what kind of prompts to do the right prompts the right questions a ask it in the right way or don't you might get something kind of cloudy or something is that right exactly yeah it's all dependent on the specific prompt that you give it and there's an art and the science to this so when i had to come up with these prompts i just said for reviewing my contract so here's my prompt for it Review the following contract and provide me the purpose of the contract, the three most important terms of the contract, the duration of the contract, and what is the consideration is for the contract. That for me was like the main point. If you give me that and clearly lay it out for me, that is pretty much how you review a contract. So yeah, it does take a little bit of uh, thinking to come up with that. But the cool part is, Ken, you could also use ChatGPT to come up with these prompts and you could say, hey, run me a perfect prompt to help me review a contract and you can feed that back to you and put that back in. So it's pretty cool. Now, the thing about chat GPT, and I might be wrong on this, is it only goes up to January 2021. So anything recent, although I think they're coming out with a new version, right? Sometime. Yeah, this this particular version of chat GPT goes up to 2021, as you said. And the other thing, it's limited by just information that's already out there. Right. So it's not coming up with anything creative or anything new. It's just based on that. And then the other limitation is it's not definitely not 100% factually correct. It's usually about 80 to 90% correct. It definitely has to be fact checked for sure. It definitely has to be reviewed before it is used. Yeah. So, you know, you got chat GPT and you just give us a lot of different ways you could use it, but you also have something called Dolly. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, the Dolly. Uh, that's a image generator. So you basically based on a prompt, you could say, draw me a camel in, a, in the middle of an Antarctica who is uh, juggling uh, tomatoes while he's surfing. And basically it will take <laughs> all the artificial intelligence technology that it has and it will uh, create you a very weird looking image of exactly what you just explained. 
Do you do you feel do you feel the way I feel? I, and, and I don't know enough to say I'm certain, but I just have this feeling that this is the biggest thing since the computer chip for the computers. Totally. I, and I might be wrong, but I, I, I want your opinion because you seem to really know what you're talking about. And the other lawyers I talk to are like me. We don't know. I mean, you know, we think we know, but I don't know. I just see it as a big deal. Sure. Actually, yeah, this is called disruption, technological disruption. And I'll share the different disruptions that we had in our history. I actually have a visual of it right here. So I'll just, I'll just read it out. It's not for me. It's uh, just from the sources that I've learned from. The first major disruption was the telephone. Okay. Obviously, that was huge. Then it was the cable TV. Then it was fax. Then mobile phones. Then PC. Then internet. Then maybe crypto. And, and then now AI. Uh, but what's cool about this, and you guys are seeing this on video, is that the first one, telephone, um, on the X axis is time. So how long it takes. So telephone, it took um, about 40 years for it to reach 10 million uh, users. Then the next time the technology, it took much less time to reach 10 million. Then fax, even less. Then mobile phone, even less. Then PC, the internet, and then you know, crypto, and then now AI. What's fascinating about this kind of disruption is it's been by far the fastest growth disruption that's ever happened. Just a couple of days ago, ChatGPT reached 100 million users, uh, I believe in less than two months or so, which is crazy. I imagine all these other technologies, again, took about you know 40 years, this did it in less than two months. Yeah, you know, and, and the deal is, everybody says, you know, well, Google can figure it out, but I don't, I think if you run it through enough, but like, uh, there's a thing called what, uh, Quillbot, you know, things like that, uh, that you can uh, rearrange it without using the spinning stuff. I don't think they can. And I, and I tell you what, another reason I don't think they can is because you look at what Google's been saying about this stuff. They were against it a year ago. Now they're keep, now they're saying, as long as it gives great factual content, it's okay. And I think the reason they're saying that is because today in the Wall Street Journal, Google is releasing a new artificial intelligence program called BARD, B-A-R-D, which I know nothing about. I had even recently, I just was reading the Wall Street Journal before I, about 30 minutes before I, I got on air with you today. And I'm thinking, that's why they said it's okay, because they're gonna do it. And then I read that Microsoft is upgrading Bing to have this type of technology. I don't really understand what they're talking about, but it tells me if you got Microsoft, Google in this, they see you know, their handwriting on the wall too, and they want to get in it and not be left behind. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you're a lawyer and you're looking to work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life, right below this video, you'll find a link to book a call to speak to my team so we can tell you how we've been able to help over 500 law firm owners scale their law firm. Now back to the video. Yeah, so let me give some historical background with what's going on. Basically, Microsoft was able to make a deal with OpenAI, which owns ChatGPT. Um, they came up with this weird agreement, which basically they'll fund it in exchange for 49% of the company, but I believe 75% of the profits have to go to Microsoft first, which is kind of like a weird kind of arrangement. But anyways, the important part is Microsoft owns ChatGPT. And the way that they're, they're going to be utilizing it is they're going to be adding it to Bing Search and, you know, Google's competitor when it comes to search. At the same time, Google owns 90% of the market share of search. Obviously, it's a major disruption if another company comes and releases this new, much better kind of search. So in the past couple of months, there's been a lot of talk. What is Google and they going to do? But the people that know that Google has been sitting on a technology called Palm, and if you actually go Google Palm versus ChatGPT, you will see Palm's technology, which is basically Google's technology, is far away ahead of ChatGPT. So if you were impressed by ChatGPT, wait till Ch Google releases their own version. And actually, I, just yesterday, I was watching a video by a Stanford uh, professor who was, who was explaining this in detail. And Palm is light years ahead in this. And just yes, uh, just two days ago, uh, Google's uh, CEO uh, made an announcement on his blog, uh, Sundar Pichai. It's called an, an important next step on our AI journey. Just even the title itself, an important next step on our AI journey. That means that, <laughs> listen, we're not just starting this journey. We've been doing this, you know, we've been at it for a while. But just, it is true. If people that have been following Google, um, you know, I, I know. I remember five years ago when they uh, when Google did um, a presentation, they did a presentation of 
Google Voice or Google AI that was basically making a call, phone call on behalf of the person who was presenting. Imagine basically Google, Google's robot was calling like a hair salon and making an appointment. And that was five years ago. So they're already, you know, they're already, you know, they already have this the technology. But anyways, it's coming out in the next uh, couple of weeks. Google's version of ChatGPT, and it's gonna blow ChatGPT out of the water. That is wild, it really is, man. And all this in the last ninety days, right? I mean, really, I mean, when did they release? They released that in November, right? ChatGPT. Uh, end of November. So let's just say December first. So you know, the time we're recording this, it's been, it's been like less than two and a half months. Um, right. Yeah, it's totally wild, major disruption. Um, obviously, a lot of roles and you know work can be replaced. The way that I kind of see it is, it doesn't replace workers, but it does replace a lot of work. So it does make people and work more efficient. So actually, I've been encouraging my team right away as soon as I saw that you know it's useful, go go use it. If it helps you write, you know descriptions or whatever, go use it. You know, don't ever get stuck on knowing what to write. Just use that and do the best to you know to refine it and send it out. What else should we be looking at, Sam? I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, as far as all this artificial intelligence. I don't want you to give away secrets, but I do want to know what what do you what do you think? I think uh, honestly, uh, it's very important to understand the, the technology and also start using it because it's not going to go away and it's also going to disrupt a lot of things. So honestly, at this point, just start using ChatGPT, basically, and just get used to using it. The other, I think, wave that I think is important that a lot of lawyers and law firms don't really talk about, which I think I've been kind of putting out there, but it's really Bitcoin, basically. It's now, I believe, 12 years old. It's about, yeah, it was in, uh, invented in 2008 and pub released publicly since 2009. So it hasn't been that long, but that also has been very revolutionary and a major disruption to the banking market. And it basically eliminates the middle person. It eliminates the banking system eliminates these credit card processing fees, eliminates a lot of different things. And it, it's just a much quicker, more reliable, more trustworthy system for two people to be able to exchange value with each other. A lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about what crypto is. People just assume it's a scam or whatever that is, all those negative talks. But if you really dig deeper, and it actually took me many years to really understand it. And I've been studying it for the past five or six years. The more that I understand how valuable this technology is, and how much this is really going to change the world for many years to come. I've been kind of putting it out there, I've been talking about it publicly for the past four years. Most people kind of, again, some people are skeptics. So as soon as they hear about it, they shoot it down. But the people that are open-minded and are willing to explore it really, I think it'll be life-changing, not only monetarily, but also again, um, be able to take advantage of the benefits of be able to send payments quickly to people, be able to hold value in money okay, while there's so much unlimited cash printing happening, while inflation has is, is been kicking in, while the, there's interest rates that are affecting the market. That is kind of like a safe haven that people could hold on to, to be able to make sure that they future-proof themselves at least for the next 10 years. But see, the thing that worries me about it, and I'll just be honest with you, I'm not skeptical, but like I put some money in in January, okay? Bitcoin. I didn't, I'm not doing very well. You know Good. what I mean? You're a perfect person that I could talk to out with you. Good. Yeah, Good. But, but I hadn't done anything with it. I'm just, I'm just, I said, you know, you don't lose till you sell, right? Exactly. And it's not meant to be traded. And if you get into the game of buying and then like, well, now I'm down, now I'm up. That is the wrong way to kind of look at it. And it's going to throw you off. Instead, I kind of look at it as I'm buying real estate. I'm not looking to flip houses, at least. I'm looking to hold, uh, buy assets and hold on to them for decades and not worry about what happens short term. Long term, real estate goes up, stocks go up, bonds go up, everything goes up. And it's just about having a long term mindset and perspective on this and not being shaken out by what happens short term. Whenever there's disruption that's happening, there's always high variance. People, you know, fall in love with it, then they hate it and all that stuff that goes through those emotions, just like how every big technology like Amazon and Facebook and Google and all these big the, the technologies have been through those phases. But over time, when you really zoom out and you'll see how this disruption has uh, been able to grow over time. Cool. So when I in mean, doubt, I mean, zoom like out. The stock, market, the stock market's down too. I mean, you know, it's all down. I mean, you know. It's uh, all down, but uh, if you believe in it, uh, actually I get happier when I'm like, literally, it sounds crazy, but the last three, four years, I, I get happy when it goes down because I know I believe in it, I understand the big picture. 
So when it goes down, I'm actually more willing to get into it. So, you know, it really just comes down to having a long-term perspective on it and not really getting shaken out. All right. And so now you got this thing called My Legal Academy. What is that? It's a platform for lawyers and their teams to be able to work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. It's an all-encompassing kind of platform. It's not, we're not just focused on business growth and long-term growth, which is great, which is important. Because that's my specialty. But also I've been able to bring on other instructors that could also share and guide lawyers on health, mental health, fitness, you know, everything to possibly think about, anything that makes you a better person in general. I am lucky enough and blessed enough to have a mentor when I, when I saw the amount of benefit that I got from having somebody that cares about me to be able to uh, collaborate with, to be able to mastermind with, and to be able to learn from. When I saw that, I'm like, hmm, what if I could also be the same kind of mentor for other, uh, for other lawyers? And this kind of journey was started about three years ago. Now we've had over 520 law firm uh, owners who have joined our program. And now we are taking the next step to not just, again, help on business growth, but also all aspects of life. Good deal. Well, Sam, I appreciate it. I think you you brought some clarity to me, not only on artificial intelligence, but also Bitcoin. So thank you. <laughs> For sure. And don't let inspiration fade. I always say this. If you got any inspiration from any uh, part of this, go seek it out. Go start, uh, you know, putting these things into practice. These things are not going to go away, guys. They're not going to go away. Bitcoin is not going to go away. Instead of questioning it, go seek out information and learn more about it. And this is also very interesting that Google is going to have something that's going to blow chat GPT away because I've been playing with chat GPT and it just, it just amazes me what it can do. Even, oh, though, yeah. it's not, even though it's not perfect. You know, it's not perfect. Like you said, it's about 89% correct. The pictures on Dolly are not always good and sometimes they'll, they'll have six fingers on them or something when you ask for something but uh but i think we're just in the beginning and that's what blows my mind it, it, we're just at the tip of the iceberg you know totally and the technology depends on the data that it has so the more data that it has the better technology will be well guess who has the most amount of data in the entire world that's cool Google. So whatever, you know, even you understand how much information that we give it on an individual basis, just from our emails, let alone our Google photos, which is our pictures and this, all these other tools, all these tools are just a way for, for them to capture data about you so that they could over time. And who, owns, and who owns YouTube? <laughs> and Google owns YouTube. Two and top search engines in the world. Uh, it's the two top TVs in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The, the biggest TV channel and uh, the biggest place where people seek information. Good deal. Well, thank you so much. Uh, anybody wants to get up with you, what's the best way, Sam? Uh, just go search My Legal Academy or search for my name, Sam Malai. I prov uh, provide a lot of value up front. I'm playing the long term game. I'm not going anywhere. Can I see a lot of synergy between us two? Uh, hopefully, be able to find some synergy between us. Uh, this world is a win win. There's no zero sum game between anybody and anything. I think both me and Ken are here to provide as much value, make everybody's lives better. So definitely uh, check both of us out and uh, look forward to it. Thank you so much. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated to your success.